All right, in following the directions. We need nine, a minimum of nine frames, but our animation is likely going to be a lot more frames. The size and resolution of our GIF animation should be an eight inch square at a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. Notice that that is below print resolution because we don't print GIFs. We watch them on a screen, right? If you follow that resolution, you will be able to make a printable version of your animation as a refined storyboard. And that will be 30 by 40 inches at 100 pixels per inch, which is the same as 8 by 10 or close to the same as 8 by 10 by 300. So it will be a print quality version, but that's because there's nine of them, not just one. So to set up my first frame, I've created this Photoshop file. Now I need to size it. I'm going to keep my character as a smart object, might as well, uh, for the time being. So I'm going to go to image, image size. I want to make sure it's a perfect square. And I'm going to resample it. So right now it's 10 inches by 10 inches, 10.28 by 10.28 at 350. I'm going to save a lot of memory here by making it 8 inches by 8 inches by 150. It was 37 megabytes, this one image. Now it's only 4 megabytes. That's important because we're going to build up lots and lots of layers, and each of those adds memory. So what do I have? I have my backdrop. There's my backdrop. I have my character. There's my character. And then I have the stuff that's in front of my character on the stage. So in this case, it's the French fry kind of props. You wheel them out on carts. You put them at the edge of the stage. And you've got this smoke machine giving me all this kind of atmosphere. And then behind my character, what do I have? I have a backdrop that has a middle ground that I can take away that my character is in front of. So if my character needs to, I can sink them behind the middle ground. But that's not part of my story. I have a background and I have a pizza. And I'm thinking about, though I'm not required to, I'm thinking about moving that pizza. You know, maybe it will start up here and slowly set. through the animation, right? So maybe my first frame has the pizza out of frame. Why not? So the first time I see the pizza, maybe it will be right here. And then I've got just the, the sky, the background sky. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off that pizza layer for right now. So, 8 inches by 8 inches, 150 pixels per inch. I have set up my first keyframe. I'm done with that. I'm going to bring my guides to the edges, just so I'm really clear if something is off from that. And I'm going to change the name of this file, because this is not my full assignment. This is only one Photoshop file I need for it. This is my assignment 3 assets and make it all in capitals because this is where I'm going to build all the different things I need and now because I have my first frame I can build my next Photoshop file that I need which is what's called the stage file so I'm going to mark this as green this is my assets and I'm going to march, mark my stage file as blue and this is what's weird about the stage file. You take all of your assets and you flatten them. Layer flatten. Discard all those hidden layers because this is on a different file and it's going to be called stage. So when Tim Burton sets up his whole frame, then it gets photographed for a stop motion image. That exposure on the camera, that is the stage. That is what goes into the film reel. 
So this will be our film reel, the finished stage. Only things that are stage ready should ever be put here and they should be flattened into one layer. All right. Now I'm gonna close that stage file, find it on my desktop, mark it blue, and go back to my assets. I know it sounds complicated, it will make sense. So now, what's the next asset I need to build in my assets file for this? I need to bring in that hand. So let's get that hand. Boom. Let's cut it out. How do we cut it out? We use the compositing skills we've learned. I think I can get away with a lot with magic wand, holding down shift, with contiguous turned on, right? Get some of this space around it because I want a really nice clean cutout. Yes, because there's a whole lot of pixel variation, right? But luckily, right at the edge of the hand, there aren't colors that match the same thing. And this is actually, this is pretty good. It would be a lot harder if it was like one hand amidst a whole bunch of hands, right? Okay, now I've done that. What I'm going to do is hit delete. And in order to delete it, what do I need to do? I need to rasterize it. So I right click and rasterize, delete. There's gonna be a lot of debris. So how can I help cut back on all this debris and soften that edge? I can hit select and mask to feather my selection. And it remembers my settings. It's a five pixel radius, 2.5 pixel feather. Just hit delete, hit delete. That smooths it. And now I'm just gonna use the lasso to get everything else and delete it. And now let me see if I can move that around. And I don't see any other debris around it. Looks good. If I want it to look a little bit sharper, because my feather at low, lower resolutions, and it's a pretty low resolution asset. Oh, there's a little bit of debris I can still clean up. There we go. Sometimes selecting it can help you see it. So I'm going to use magic wand with a zero pixel feather and just grab those. They are highlighted by my selection. And then I'm going to say select the inverse. Oh, no, actually, I don't. Everything's good. Now I delete. Now it's gone. Now if I move it around, I shouldn't see any of that debris. I should have a clean asset. Now what can I do to play with it? It's already about the right size. I could scale it up more, but I think that's the, a good size. Boom, boom. That's basically what I want to do with it. So then you're going to slowly drop it into frame. Yeah. Frame by frame. Bum, so, bum, bum, so bum, 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 First, I want to make sure I can at least cover these nine frames. Okay. So if I only did those nine frames, the animation would look like this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. You know, basically. And when you play that, you would want to play each frame for about a third of a second. So it'd be like, duh, 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 duh. You know, that was maybe a little bit slower. So what I do is now in betweens, I'm going to add more frames. And I can decide how many. If I want the hand to go really slow, I can build 20 frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You know, I can decide how many I want. And then I can also decide how quickly I see those do I see them 24 frames per second? Whereas 20 frames would only take less than a second? Or do I want to do it at 0.2 frames per second where 20 frames would take, you know, a few seconds? So you'll see. We get to control all of these aspects. In standard animation, it's always 24 frames per second. So you have to kind of really measure it out. What's nice about this being a hand instead of being 
like a sun in the sky that needs to move very predictably is I don't need to move it perfectly evenly. I can just kind of visualize it. The other thing I want to do is I want to optimize this asset just like I did for my character, right? So I might want to go to image adjustments and I might want to play with the levels. But Terry Gilliam is pretty great. So those levels are kind of right on. Yeah. But I can play with the hue saturation. can make it a different kind of hand, but those are pretty much right on. I could desaturate it, make it match the, uh, the creature a little bit more. Maybe that's worth it. So yeah, I certainly could do that. Now, if I wanted to, though Terry Gilliam's good inspiration because he's super efficient, so he would never do that, right? He would just use the assets as they are, which to me is, is kind of the coolest thing to do because it's counter what's so common in animation now, where everything is a movable thing. But to do that, what I would do is now, because I've cleaned up the asset, I would duplicate it, Command-J, and then I would start to play with it. And the most basic way would be to create a hinge, right? And then just to, right in that layer, transform on that hinge. So now I have one layer where the hand is open and one layer where the hand is closed. Right. And then I just use clone stamp or something else to fill in that hinge. So puppet warp is a more complicated way to do it, right? which again isn't as elegant as Terry Gilliam, but yes. So let's duplicate the hand. Now on this layer, let's use Puppet Warp. So edit Puppet Warp, it's what it's for. Set my anchors. And then just decide. Woohoo. It just depends what the, the asset is and what you want to do with it. The problem with Puppet Warp for me in this, because it's not going to be 24 frames per second, unless I want to put a whole lot of time into it, is that it's going to look a little soft and mushy, right? So I'll just do it quick, this, and then I'm going to duplicate it, do puppet warp again. And these are all things you should play with if you're curious about for what it works for you, because it's going to be different for everyone. Now the next one, I'm going to move it down. I can get as much control as I want. Then I'm going to duplicate that, puppet warp it again, and I'm duplicating it each time. So I'm saving an asset for each position, just like you would save, you know, Jack Skellington with a different expression on his face. So you're going to see that this movement's very controllable and very subtle. Boom. So let's see what that looks like animated. So it would be this then this, then this, right? So that's a lot smoother. It just depends how you want to manipulate it than back to the original. And so this is a view where you can see the whole trajectory of the movement, just a pinching. But I'm a purist. So I'm just going to stick with this cutout. And the only movement I'm going to worry about for this is just coming in and out. Now for the creature, I need to build more. First of all, I'm going to rasterize it. And if I'm protective, which you should be of your assets file, I'm going to make a duplicate of the smart object and then rasterize the copy. And I'm going to make it a little bit more colorful. Subtlety does not really play well. So I'm going to make its hue a little bit more visible. And I'm going to play with its levels and make it a little bit stronger. A little bit brighter, a little bit darker. Just more visible, kind of more animated. Now, it's going to grab the head. And my idea is that it's going to break right here. So if I duplicate it again, now I can build in that break. And I'm going to use a funny little lasso that we haven't used before. It's called the polygonal lasso. 
The polygonal lasso will cut in straight lines. 